We're going to go over the steps for solving radical equations in this video. So if you only have one radical in your equation, the first thing that you would do is isolate that radical. So here, here's my example. I have the square root of x minus 1 plus a 2 equals 12. So I want that radical all by itself. So I will just subtract 2 from both sides. And I end up with the square root of x minus 1 equals 10. Step 2 is to take both sides of the equation to the root's power. So since I have a square root in my equation, I'm going to take both sides to that power, to the squared power. That eliminates the radical. So the square root of x minus 1 squared is x minus 1. 10 squared is 100. Step three is to solve the remaining equation. So here I'm just going to add one to both sides and I get x equals 101. Now we've got our value for x, but step four is very important. If your original radical was even powered, so like a square root or a fourth root or a sixth root, you need to check your solution into the original equation to make sure that the solution works. The reason that happens is because even radical equations can get extraneous solutions, which means you may have squared a negative somewhere that shouldn't have been a negative, so you just need to double check. So my original equation was x, so 101 minus 1 plus 2 equals 12. So the square root of 100 is 10 plus 2 is 12. So it checks out. So that means that my actual solution then is for sure x equals 101. Okay, let's try and solve the fourth root of x minus, or 2x minus 1 equals 3. So the first step I want to do here is find what the root is, or isolate the variable first, sorry. Since our radical is isolated, now we want to take both sides to whatever the root power is. So here I have the fourth root. So what I want to do is I want to take both sides to the fourth power. That eliminates the fourth root. So we end up with 2x minus 1 equals 3 to the 4th power, which is 81. Okay, that's step 2. Now step 3 would be to solve the remaining equation. So we're going to just add 1 to both sides. So 2x equals 82. And divide both sides by 2. And we get x equals 41. Now the next step is just to take this equation and plug it back into the original to make sure it works. So I have here the fourth root of 2 times 41 minus 1 equals 3. All right, so 82 minus 1 is 81. The fourth root of 81 is 3, so it checks out. So x equals 41 is indeed our solution. All right, sometimes your equation will have multiple radicals. So see how we have multiple radicals in the square root of x plus the square root of x plus 5 equals 5. So in order to solve this, we want to isolate the more complex radical first. Then we will square both sides. That's where it gets a little bit tricky because when you square one of the sides, you may have to FOIL. We'll take a look at that in the example. And then after you FOIL, you isolate the remaining radical and solve. So let's see what we get. <clears throat> so first I'm going to subtract the square root of x over to the right side. And I end up with the square root of x plus 5 
equals 5 minus the square root of x. Okay, so this is where the problem gets tricky. You'll want to then square both sides of this equation, but I have to square the entire side. So this ends up being x plus 5 equals. Now this part, the 5 minus the square root of x means 5 minus the square root of x times another 5 minus the square root of x. So in order to multiply this problem, you have to FOIL. So we've got first, outer, inner, and last. Negative square root of x times negative square root of x is plus x. Okay, so we kind of check and see what we have remaining. In this case, we'd have x plus 5 equals 25 plus x minus 10 square root of x. I'm just combining like terms. Now, we're going to want to isolate the remaining variable. So I'm going to subtract the 25 over, and I will also subtract the x over. So in here we are left with negative 20 equals negative 10 square root of x. We want that radical isolated. Now this is a step you can do after you square both sides, but it might be a little bit easier in most cases to get the variable or the radical completely isolated. So we're left with 2 equals the square root of x. And then we go ahead and square both sides. We get x equals 4. Now, we do need to check it back into our original equation. So we have the square root of x is, or square root of 4 is 2. The square root of 4 plus 5, that's 9. Square root of 9 is 3. Is 2 plus 3 equal to 5? It is. So x equals 4 is my answer. All right, and now that is how you multiply or you solve equations with radicals inside them.